When we use certificates in a public key infrastructure, there are a number of different stages. The first stage is enrolling for certificates, which means requesting a certificate from a CA, uh, either from a specific user account or computer, or on behalf of them. And then once that's done, installing them on those systems. So in this topic, we're going to look at enrolling certificates for the different entities that require them. So users and other entities are going to obtain certificates from a CA through the certificate enrollment process. And this process has um, some specific steps that are associated with it. So number one, the entity is going to request a certificate. They go through a particular procedure to obtain the certificate, and that procedure will vary. In some cases, it's automated. In other cases, it's manual. And the manual will use different methods, wizards versus web pages, for instance. Uh, the RA will then authenticate that entity. So this is used to determine the policy requirements. You know, in many cases, it's just username and password. But in other cases, there may be additional requirements. The policy is applied to the request that pertains to a particular CA that's going to issue the certificate, and that request is sent to the certi certificate authority. So assuming you meet all the requirements, the request is sent to uh, the CA, then the certificate is issued and placed in a repository. The entity is notified that the certificate is available, and then the certificate is accessed and installed. Okay. So that's your typical certificate enrollment process. Uh, do realize that in some cases, this might be slightly different depending on the entity and depending on the scenario. The life cycle of the certificate has also several main phases. It begins with issuance. So the, the life cycle of, um, or I guess they're saying this is of certificates in general, so the life cycle of the certificates is going to begin when the root CA has issued its own self-signed key pair and then begins issuing certificates to other CAs and to end users. Okay? So step two is enrollment. Users and other entities are obtaining certificates. Step three is renewal. These certificates may need to be renewed uh, more than once depending on policy parameters. Revocation can happen when you have to revoke a certificate before its normal expiration date that renders the certificate permanently invalid. Reasons for revoking certificates may be on obtaining one fraudulently, misuse of a certificate, compromise, uh, loss of trust like a user leaving the company, etc. A certificate can expire after a given length of time, which is established in the policy. And some CAs support a temporary suspension of certificate in addition to permanent revocation. Okay, so once we start enrolling it, then these are the life cycle elements that we can go through with individual certificates. Now, as a general rule, the longer the life cycle is, the less administrative overhead that you're going to uh, have. However, that can give you a higher risk because the longer the life cycle, it also gives attackers more time to break the cryptography of the key pair or otherwise compromise the system. Okay. Also, with a shortened lifetime, you have new developments in cryptography that could allow you to issue out new and more secure certificates for entities. So in reality, the actual length of the life cycle is going to be based on the business requirements and security needs of each individual organization. And so you can ask yourself questions uh, and, and understand the factors that will affect the security life cycle, the certificate life cycle, excuse me. The, the factors uh, are things like the length of the private key and what length is appropriate. And in general, the longer the key, uh, the more data you, bits you have to work with, therefore the more secure, therefore the more resources um, that are required. And so the more resources are required, the more time is required, and attackers may not think it's actually worth it. The strength of the cryptography that's going to be used, the, com you know, the complexity of the algorithm, the physical security of the CA and the private key, the risk of attack, uh, the security of issued certificates and their private keys. Where's the private key going to be stored? Is it on a computer? Is it password protected? Is it on a smart card? Etc. The administrative involvement with the whole certificate process. I'm kind of just running over those fairly quickly, but those are factors uh, that are a part of the lifecycle management process that we do need to consider.
You can use certificates to implement SSL TLS connections as we have discussed, and there are several steps that are a part of that process. Let's take a look at those. I feel like we've mentioned this before, but uh, this is another graphic. Client sends a request to the server. It's requesting a secure session, and the server will respond with its digital certificate and public key to the client. At that point, the client and the server will negotiate a level of encryption. Once they have agreed upon a level of encryption, a session key will be generated by the client. It's unique to that session. It's encrypted using the server's public key, and then it's sent to the server. Uh, from that point on, the communication will be encrypted, and the session key becomes the key used for both encryption and decryption. So that's just a real-life example of a situation where we would be utilizing a secure communication channel via certificates.